how does autophagy get even more intense? Like what else can our cells eat? Autophagy is where our cells are recycling typically unused components or just non-functional proteins to be able to ultimately allow the cell to survive. But now there's research showing that there is a more intense kind of fasting. And it was published in the journal Autophagy. Now it has to do with dry fasting, which I don't always recommend, but it's still pretty interesting science that there's more than one kind of just fasting autophagy. Now I have a fun kind of analogy where I can like paint a picture for you so you can see what this kind of autophagy is. But first off, let's just touch on what regular autophagy is, okay? When we are going through a fast, autophagy upregulates because our body goes into a little bit of a, well, a lot of a bit of a stressed out mode, okay? And now when this happens, the body says, oh my gosh, I have no choice but to start kind of like downsizing things so that I can run more efficiently. So what happens is, unused or non-functional components of cells are kind of recycled and used as ultimately fuel so that the cell can have food and then you end up with a better survival of the fittest like efficient body it's pretty cool it's like your body's natural sort of like i don't know ability to just get rid of the waste of the people that aren't pulling their own weight and allow your body to thrive with the parts that are working well well this new study published in the journal autophagy was demonstrating that when we are dry fasting, we have a very unique kind of autophagy called hypertonic autophagy. And this is where your body doesn't just break down unused components, but it's actually using functional components as well. Hey, after this video, speaking of fasting, if you wanna check out Thrive Market down below in the description, they are an online membership-based grocery store. This video is brought to you by them and they are awesome when it comes down to keto or fasting because they have all of the better for you options that I would typically lean into whenever I am fasting or well doing keto or paleo or anything. So there's a link down below for you to check them out. They deliver groceries right to your doorstep, super convenient, very economical, a lot of times less expensive than going to the grocery store. Plus you don't have to drive to the grocery store, it just gets delivered to your doorstep. So if you look at my pantry, almost everything is from Thrive because it's just easier for me as a busy dad now. But anyhow, there's a link down below for you to check them out. You can check out my shopping lists and things that I recommend as well and that link is down below in the description. All right, moving on. So this new kind of autophagy, or I guess it's not new, it's just new to us. Here's what it looks like. When we are dry fasting, we're not having water, it instigates this whole different kind of fasting. And the reason that it does that is because in an effort to try to restructure a cell to function properly in a dehydrated state, it has to go through a pretty intense autophagy. So what happens is you have this remodeling of what are called the microtubules of a cell. So when we are fasting, our cells, eh, they might dehydrate a little bit, but when we're dry fasting and we're not having water, our cells actually shrink, okay? Because the fluid, the water that is in the cell, leaves the cell to go to a more concentrated, you know, like sodium level on the outside of the cell. So water leaves the cell and the cell shrinks. Well, this triggers a restructuring of the microtubules of a cell. The microtubules, I'm doing this with my fingers because I'm trying to demonstrate it. The microtubules are like the bone structure of a cell. They kind of hold it together, but they also channel certain things. Now, I want you to imagine this, okay? Imagine you have a big balloon. I've talked about this in another video. And in this balloon, when it's inflated, you have these strings or these threads that go from the inside of the balloon to the other side of the inside of the balloon. So when the cell is engorged and it's healthy and it's big, these are pretty taut strings and it's like a bone structure. But then all of a sudden, the cell shrinks. Well, these bones were threads and now they're kind of like limp and they're just kind of floating around, right? So it would make sense that you would need a certain degree of autophagy to quote unquote remodel the bone structure, okay, the microtubules, because now you have this convoluted tanglement of threads, right? But let's add some complication to this. Taking that same balloon, I want you to imagine that there's the threads, but there's also these like, I don't know, low power magnets that are just floating around through the balloon, okay? Now, when the balloon is inflated and it's engorged, it's fine because the magnets are far enough away from each other. But as the balloon shrinks, the magnets get closer together. And what do they do? <laughs> they stick together once it shrinks and gets closer. Well, then you have these clumps. And these clumps are like this, what's called macromolecular crowding. It's all this protein and all this other stuff that clumps together. And then that throws off sort of the, what is called the folding and the unfolding of the proteins within our cell. So suddenly our cells cannot go through normal transformation. They cannot go through normal replication. The DNA is getting all whacked out. It's not working properly. 
So what ends up happening? If you didn't have a massive intervention at this point in time, this cell would die. Okay, because it would trigger so much misfolding of proteins that it would basically self-destruct and die. You'd have premature apoptosis. So we need something to occur. That's where this autophagy comes in. And this special autophagy degrades all proteins within the cell. Not all of them, but all as in a category. Like all of them are up for grabs. Usually autophagy is just breaking down ones that we're not using. But in this case, even ones we are using get utilized. Well, is this good? Well, not necessarily for the long term, but it can be really good in the short term because it's an intense stressor that forces the cell to become super ridiculously simple and very efficient. Okay, so now we have this restructuring of the tubules that is important for two reasons. One, the cell shrunk, so the tubules need to change. But two, in order to actually have lysosomes, which is where autophagy takes place, you need to have microtubules. And if the microtubules, the bone structure within the cell are all messed up, well, then you're not able to have autophagy. So it's like you need to have the microtubules reworked before the autophagy can do its job. So therefore you end up with the autophagy being able to do its job more effectively. And you end up with a very potent, highly effective cell, but it's a very fine line because if you go too far, what happens? The cell dies. So I wouldn't exactly say that dry fasting is the best way to like achieve this. Well, it's the best way to achieve this autophagy, but it's not the best way to achieve the desired outcome. I've seen people such as like Ben Greenfield talk about even training in a somewhat dehydrated state, not in extreme dry fast, but just in the morning before having water or anything because the increase in plasma volume and the actual ability to drive change exercise induces autophagy. So there could be some argument between like getting up in the morning in a mildly dehydrated state and doing moderate exercise because you're going to trigger this kind of autophagy to occur. People think that autophagy only occurs when we're fasting, but it occurs when we're exercising and it's occurring all the time. Like it can be happening in one area of the body and not happening in another. Fasting just accelerates it, but dehydration in some ways seems to accelerate it. And I'm not suggesting everyone go out and get dehydrated, but occasionally a workout in a mildly dehydrated state could even like trigger this sort of, again, hypertonic autophagy. I am not a doctor. I'm some dude on the internet that used to be overweight and I've learned biochemistry over the years and I like to share it with people. So I'm not recommending you do anything crazy, but a new kind of autophagy is always fun and exciting and we're all here about experimentation. So why not just at least look into it a little bit more? As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.